Welcome back to CivilNet. I'm your host, Patrick Elliott. I'm actually delighted to be joined today by Shai Nakilen, who's a structural engineer and a uh, civil servant in uh, the city of Los Angeles. Uh, Shai, thanks for joining us today. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. So, uh, Shai, uh, given that Armenia is uh, located on a seismic uh, fault line and uh, we, ha we already had the experience of the 1988 uh, Spitak earthquake, the question is not... Uh, if but when the next earthquake is going to occur in Armenia, and of course, most of our buildings are from the nine are from the uh, the Soviet era. They're um, you know something like ninety percent of the buildings are are old. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you what you noticed about the state of uh, construction in Armenia, the majority of our buildings? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me here. Uh, I think this is a good opportunity for me to. Um, help raise awareness for earthquake safety. So glad to be here. Yeah, I mean, based on information that is known, uh, most of the, you know, vulnerable buildings in in, uh, in Armenia were born, uh, were built in a Soviet era requirements. And there are a lot of known irregularities, lack of reinforcement or proper, you know, detailing. Um, and, and the only conclusion that we can make is that, you know, there's, there needs to be a re-evaluation re and possibly retrofitting in some of those uh, critical buildings. And, and there are, you know, different types of critical buildings that exist in Armenia. Uh, there are buildings that, uh, what, what, what's called non-ductile concrete buildings. Uh, those are uh, concrete buildings that do not have sufficient reinforcement uh, bars. Uh, to provide uh, flexibility and ductility on, on uh, the building uh, uh, when it undergoes a, a shaking event. Or uh, soft story buildings, so those are buildings that have a very uh, open flow, flow plan of, um, at the lower level and very stiff upper levels um, that they need um, addressing. And there's a lot of unreinforced masonry or stone buildings that do not even have any reinforcement on them um, uh, either. And, and uh, those are buildings that um, in Los Angeles, for example, they banned those in 1933. And it's only a few years ago in Armenia that they, um, they did the same. So, uh, and, and overall, I think the main issue that we can see at the, from the information that we have gathered so far, there are a lot of improper detailing of connections. For example, connections between floors and walls uh, was a big issue in 1988 earthquake, uh, where essentially the walls separated um, from the floors and the floors just pancaked. Uh, it's it's very you know unfortunate uh, thing that has been done. So. Um, I think uh, there needs to be an evaluation, uh, especially for essential buildings or buildings that have vulnerable populations, such as hospitals, schools, um, community center, large apartments. Um, so I think uh, raising awareness uh, about this issue is very important so that, you know, steps can be taken to uh, address those deficiencies uh, before it's too late. Um, how feasible is it to retrofit, you know, you're talking like 90% of uh, the capital city's infrastructure. So for the scale of the problem, compared with the capacity of expertise, the, the economic cost that this is going to, going, to, going to incur, I mean, how feasible is it to, you know, retrofit all these buildings and make Yerevan an actual safe city and, and earthquake proof city? Yeah, I think uh, uh, the first I think step needs to be taken is to look at uh, our the codes that we're using right now because the current codes that we're using are Soviet era uh, codes. I I believe uh, it's based on uh, National Seismic Code in 1994. Then it was revised in 2006, and the latest one is from 2020. So the issue not, not, is not only the existing uh, buildings, but also even the new buildings that are being built uh, may not be what we want them to be. Uh, it, it, is, it is a long task uh, to be done, 
Um, for example, you know, in Los Angeles, there are retrofit ordinances for concrete buildings. That is a 25-year program, but it needs to start somewhere. Um, and sooner we start, sooner that can be done. It, and, and also, we need there's, there needs to be a need to prioritize. Uh, for example, in, in retrofit in Los Angeles, we're not even tackling single family, like houses, like single family dwellings. Um, we're tackling apartments and larger buildings that will have a large impact to the community. So I'm not sure whether when we say 90% of the buildings, um, you know, those include all of the buildings or just uh, prioritizing essential buildings. Um, but it's, uh, it is feasible to do, it's just the work needs to start somewhere. Uh, currently, we're looking at approximately 400 buildings that are above uh, nine floors in Armenia. Uh, what can be done to increase the seismic resistance of these buildings? Yeah, I mean, a ninth floor is not too tall uh, of a building that uh, there's a chance that you might be able to install like base isolators, uh, for example. And, and uh, in actually in Armenia, uh, there have been some progress made in, uh, in uh, recently, I believe in uh, 2020, there was a, uh, one of the chapter, chapter 10, I believe, was revised in, uh, uh, in Republic of Armenia building code. Uh, where they make it, made improvements on detailing and what have you. Um, and, and I believe the, currently there are like 50 buildings or so uh, that are being retrofitted and built using base isolators. So that could be one of the solutions that can be implemented in, in some of those buildings. But uh, the high-rise buildings uh, are unique because of how they're being designed. Um, in the codes that we use in the United States, uh, there are limits of how tall the building is, where you start doing more complex analysis. We have limits of 160 feet, which is about 50 meters, or 240 feet, uh, which is 75 feet. There's certain uh, thresholds where uh, you cannot have certain type of um, earthquake resistant systems or uh, you need to do additional analysis, like a performance-based analysis. So uh, it, it, there are ways to make improvements to nine-story buildings or 16-story buildings. From what I remember, uh, you know, uh, being in Armenia, that it was like a common cookie cutter plans that were, you know, approved in Russia and brought into Armenia to, you know, to be built. Uh, everywhere, you know, those nine-story or 16-story buildings. Um, but again, it's, uh, we need to start somewhere. It, 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 they, there are ways to, uh, to do them, but the first thing I think you need to do is to survey to see what those buildings are, what conditions they're in, uh, what issues and deficiencies they have, what needs to be addressed, what type of systems they are. So uh, it's just surveying and identifying which ones need improvements. Uh, it's it's a first; those are the first steps to tackle this large task. Um, is there such a thing as an early warning system? I mean, we've seen what happened in Japan. We know that uh, you know San Francisco has uh, faced earthquakes. L.A. the Valley. So. Is there such a thing as an early warning system that's being developed that Armenia can uh, can integrate to? warn us, you know, give us advanced warning that, uh, that an earthquake is, uh, is on the horizon? Uh, I, in, in Japan, uh, it is critical because it's an island um, surrounded by ocean. And whenever there's an earthquake that happens in the middle of the ocean next to the island, uh, there's a chance of tsunami. So the early, early warning system for tsunamis works. Uh, there's a beta, uh, there's an app uh, that that is that was developed in in Los Angeles a few years ago uh, that will give few second advance notice if there's an event somewhere nearby. It's it's not reliable. It's um, 
it's not even worth doing or talking about, you know, having a, a couple set seconds of advanced uh, warning system for an earthquake. And especially Ar Armenia being, you know, small in its size, um, there's, there's no benefit of even investing any resources on predicting or having any warning system. Uh, but there aren't any technologies to predict earthquakes or to give us uh, um, any warning of it. The better solution actually would be to design the buildings to withstand wherever that is going to be, be coming on its way. Finally, Sean, uh, how can you and your colleagues uh, participate in um, developing Armenia's earthquake resiliency? Yeah, so... Um, there are a lot of Armenians around the world, and uh, especially in the United States, uh, we've been uh, communicating uh, regularly and, you know, creating our own like a task group, so to speak. Uh, a lot of uh, experienced engineers, architects, uh, geologists, um, seismologist, uh, so a lot of experts that care about Armenia, people in Armenia, buildings in Armenia, and this is a critical thing that, you know, we're concerned about. I, I think that the, the first thing that needs to happen is for uh, perhaps the government or the communities and uh, uh, the public to make this a priority for the country. And I, and I know, um, the uh, Armenia is in, in a location uh, that has a lot of um, uh, political, you know, issues that they're going through, whether it's economy, unemployment, housing, but earthquakes are something that are, um, that can have a large impact to, uh, to, to the community. And we saw that in 1988 and it's, you know, it's, it has taken decades, and it, I'm not sure if there's 100% uh, recovered. Uh, so there, there's a lot of resources that are available that, you know, from diaspora uh, outside of Armenia that we have experience um, with retrofitting buildings or designing buildings. Uh, for example, in the city of LA, I'm I'm, I used to be in charge of high-rise and seismic retrofit programs, uh, in actually implementing retrofit programs uh, where, you know, we, we use codes that are uh, up state of the art, um, you know, by any measure where there's a lot of research and what have you. So we can bring our expertise to the table, so to speak, uh, and work with the existing government and government officials uh, and, and be there to advise and help whichever way we can um, to, to solve this issue. Shaheen Akilan, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, uh, thank you again for uh, having me. Um, take care. Thanks again for watching CivilNet.